Hello and welcome. I'm Clueless Mike and this is Modelling for Advantage. So we've got another 40k unboxing for you today and this one's slightly different. This time the Kaiser or Mrs Kaiser has not sent me a present. I have bought my own present that I thought I would do an unboxing of. We have Shadow Throne. So this is a Custode or Custodies, depending on how you like to pronounce them, versus Gene Steeler Colt box set. Um, I play Custodies and I really like the new model and there's some others in there that I fancy having. So I bought myself this for Christmas. So let's see what we get inside. Okay, let's get the cellophane off. This is a weird shaped box, very flat and large compared to the start collectings we normally do. So hopefully it is all on camera. Let's get cellophane out the way, get the top of the box off. Okay, we can see inside we have a lot of plastic. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, so this is a Gene Steeler Colt sprue. Um, so this is the old character sprue. I think this was first released in, uh, I think the box set was called Death Watch Overkill. Um, which had Gene Steeler cult characters in. So here we have a Gene Steeler Patriarch, we have a Gene Steeler Primus and a Gene Steeler cult Magus. Three really useful characters. There's also on here, there is a, I believe, what are they called? Oh, they're, they're a little psychic helper um, model you get there as well. Um, these are really good characters, really good for the Gene Steeler Cult army. All three of them are really takeable and pretty useful. They've got new rules in this box. I've already done a bit of a reading up on the new rules so I can talk about them. Um, the Patriarch has become better. This is kind of like a, a nice clue as to what's going to be in the new codexes. There were supposed to be codexes coming out December for both Custodes and for Gene Steeler Cults, uh, but they've both been delayed due to shipping issues that Games Workshop's been having all year long. Um, but there is a rules booklet in here, which I'll get to, um, which previews rules from the new codex. So things like the um, Patriarch's got a little tougher. Um, he can cast two Psychic Powers instead of one now, similar for the Magus. The Primus has got a better buff area. Um, his sword now does two damage. So lots of little kind of like um, little ninth edition tweaks makes them fit in with the new edition better. All of these models are lovely. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the Gene Steeler Cult half of this as yet. Um, I don't play Gene Steeler Cults and I don't really want to. So I suspect I'm going to try and sell them on and recoup some of the price of the box. Uh, the issue with that is that the models in here are really nice and they're also really good for a new Gene Steeler Cult player. They're not good for an existing Gene Steeler Cult player. Gene Steeler Cults have special rules for more or less all of their characters where you can't have more than one in a detachment of each of their characters. So a Gene Steeler Cult player doesn't need a second Patriarch, doesn't need a second Primus or Magus. They also generally have buffs that you can't stack with another of the same type of buff. So multiple of them isn't particularly useful. So I ideally need to find somebody who doesn't play Gene Steeler Cults but wants to do so. So we'll put that one over there. Usual bases, lots of them in there. Pretty big ones for the Custodes and probably the Patriarch and small ones for the others. Well, what have we got here? So this looks like, I'll find the other half. This is my main reason for buying the box. That's not the other half. Mm, there's the other half. This is my main reason for buying the box. This is a new Custode Blade Champion. He's a really cool dude. I mean, all Custodes are supposed to be the best of the best warriors, and he is the new, kind of like Fluff says, the best of the best of the best warrior. He is a Custode that has dedicated himself to just martial combat. He doesn't really give out particular buffs, but he comes with multiple big swords and is super good at chopping them up in various different ways. His swords have different damage profiles. He can swap between um, or what you want the sword to do, depending on what you're fighting, which I really like as a mechanic. I think having kind of like sweep and strike profiles uh, makes big characters and big monsters much more interesting. So you don't get bogged down by fighting 20 Gretchen or fighting a giant monster that you can't hurt. You have the perfect profile for fighting them. Uh, a little mistake GW made is when they first previewed this model, they showed him with his two handed sword um, and for not a very good angle. Games Workshop often do this. Since this box has got out into the wild and people have been getting on the internet, 
they found out that actually the model comes with multiple poses that you can make. And a far more attractive pose is a two sword version of the model. Um, so you can make him look a lot better, similar to the art on the front of the box. Um, why they don't release that pose, which looks a load cooler as their first image, I think it would drive sales better, but maybe that's just opinion and other people prefer the two-handed sword version. Another interesting uh, thing to know is it comes with three head options, one helmeted for people who like helmeted and it's got a really cool crest on it, but also two unhelmeted heads. I've seen one person paint this model up um, to look like Geralt of Rivia um, from The Witcher, and one of the heads looks surprisingly like Henry Cavill. Very, very similar to Henry Cavill, in fact. Um, and Henry Cavill is a known 40k player and is also a Custode fan and plays Custodes himself. So I don't know whether it's an ode to him or whether it's just a coincidence. Who knows? But this is the model I'm most looking forward to building and painting. Uh, next up, we have... Sisters of Silence. So this is a full sprue of five Sisters of Silence. Um, they get three different types of weapon options here. So there's bolt guns, flamers, and two-handed swords. Uh, Sisters of Silence in the new codex, which is coming out, has been previewed. Uh, they are now being folded fully into the Custodes Codex. Uh, so they can take um, they can be taken as a troop choice, a fast attack choice, or an elite choice. And there's also an HQ choice you can take, which I believe is made from this sprue as well. One of them is slightly fancier, um, and you can now have them as a HQ choice. So I'm not going to build these as yet until the codex comes out, and I can really see which I want to use. But I suspect I'm going to build some as bolters to have as troops. Uh, the flamer options are really good because they get a scout move pre-game now, so that's pretty handy. But I shall wait and see exactly what I'm going to do with those. But they're really nice models and you get a full set in there as well. Next up, so this is a sprue of Custode Alaris Terminators. These are big, chonky boys. There are three of them on this sprue. Um, they get all their weapon options and such. They're really cool models. I already own six of these boys, so I suspect these ones may well find their way on eBay uh, so I can attempt to recoup again some of the money of the box. Um, really nice models, though. And one of the interesting things that's in the rulebook in here is you can now take them in squads of one to six. You used to have to take them in squads of three to nine. So interesting choice from Games Workshop there to reduce the size of the squad down um, but also reduce it down to take one off so that could be an interesting tactical choice being able to take single model terminator units uh, could be pretty powerful uh, one of the great thing about this kit and most of the custom unit kits uh, is that you can make an hq from this box you can actually make two from this box um, so you can make yourself a shield captain you get all the bits in here to do that all these different weapon options and such um, you also get the option to make a vexilla so a standard bearer uh, from this kit as well so really versatile kit you can make lots of useful stuff um, the ones i previously um, built I've magnetized and you can easily do that so you can have all your different options available um, for um, you, you don't need to be fixed to one particular option. So that's those. Next up, what do we have here? This is the other new model to this box. This is the Reductus Saboteur. Uh, so this is a demolitions expert for the Gene Stealer Cold. And they've released the rules for this, um, and they're really cool. Really interesting model. So he's a cool, um, or she, I think it is actually a she, uh, Call in while she's got some special hiding rules, so she can't be targeted if she's within a terrain feature and you're more than 12 inches away, which is a really cool way of basically saying she's just hunkered down, not doing anything. Um, but she's also assumed to have seeded the battlefield beforehand with explosives, uh, mined areas and such like that. Uh, so she's got a ranged weapon, um, but it's not a traditional ranged weapon, i.e. she doesn't have a big cannon on the model or anything. Uh, but she can basically set off explosives. Uh, which is treated like a ranged weapon and is really good at killing vehicles. Uh, so she's a really interesting model in that regard. She can also take an action to lay a mine, uh, which will go off later in the game if an enemy tries to move near it. Uh, really cool. She's got loads of different grenade types, things like she's got a massive great uh, demolition charge. She's got frag grenades. She's got um, little explosive charges. Really cool and interesting model. Plus it's really nice actual just physical model as well. Lastly, we have the Acolyte Hybrids. I think they're the Acolyte Hybrids. I sometimes get a bit confused about what they're called. Let's actually, we'll take a quick look at the back of the box and see what it says we get. 
neophyte hybrids. There we go. I was close. I got the fight and the hybrid part right. Uh, so this is the um, Gene Stealer Colt's lowest type of model. Kind of like these are the basic humans that have been tainted by the Gene Stealer Colt. These are modelled as miners, as most of the Gene Stealer Colt models are. Uh, really good and versatile kit. You get all the different heavy weapons in here, which have been new and improved for the new rules. So you've got a mining laser, which is like a short range LAS cannon. You've got heavy stubber. You've got webbers, which now do mortal wounds, which are pretty cool. You've got the seismic cannon is my favourite. That's this bad boy here. Really cool looking bit of kit. Also really interesting, the new rules. They've much improved it. Uh, you get loads of different head options and such to try and gene stealerify your models more or less than you like. So you've got Ones here that have bigger bulbous heads compared to these ones which are a bit more human-like. Really nice kit. I mean, the Gene Stealer Colt range is a really new model range. So all the models are really nice. Uh, it would be a lovely army to collect. An expensive army, though, because you need so many models because they're so cheap game term wise. Okay, so you get one of these bits of card, which they generally give a nice piece of art on. That is a really nice art print. Really cool picture as well. Might do something with that. Um, uh, but they put that in to separate your nice rule book from your sprues. It's quite a clever idea, it doesn't really cost them much, and some people kind of like really like having a pristine rule book. Um, so it makes more sense in like the bigger sets where your rule book can be used forever. This is a, a small stand in rule book. Uh, so here we have your assembly guide, nothing new to say here. All your options are in there, color coded, great assembly guide as always. And then we have the Shadow Throne book itself. So let's have a little look at this bit of stuff. It's getting in the way. Let's throw that on the floor. We'll open this up. So this is telling a story about Gene Stealer Cult getting to terror, which is quite interesting. So you'd never really think they'd ever manage that. But this tells the story um, about the Gene Stealer Cult being found on terror. Um, there's apparently a part in here where some Arbites are investigating something and they see a Gene Stealer cult, uh, cultist. Um, and before the cultist can kill them, he manages to get the warning off. And then it tells basically how they deploy a load of space marines, loads more Arbites and stuff like that to try and catch the Gene Stealer cult. Uh, but they fail to do so. And in the end, because it's on terror and obviously the Emperor's safety is uh, paramount, the Custodes step in and say, yeah, that's OK we're going to find this and go and capture it. So they set out to capture the Gene Stealer Patriarch that's in here. And that is the job of the Blade Champion, to go and mono a mono down the Gene Stealer Patriarch and try and capture him and then use him for nefarious purposes, I suspect. So big plot there. More art. Really nice pictures of all the models, as you normally get in Games Workshop books. These are kind of like a rules to tide us over. So they're rules from the new codex, but they don't give you much other than just the data sheets um, for the models in this box. When the data sheet has a rule on it, so the Custodes, for instance, have a rule called Aegis of the Emperor, which currently gives them a five plus invulnerable save. They've still got that on uh, these data sheets, but I suspect that's gonna do different stuff in the new codex, similar with all the Gene Stealer Cult stuff. Uh, it's got some special missions to use, so you can play through that scenario I just told you about. Um, it's got some extra crusade rules in here, and it's actually got some crusade relics and other bits like that for the two factions presented. So that's quite interesting. Whether they're recreated in the new codexes, we'll have to find out. So you can see there, you've got some crusade relics. You've got a couple of tables that you can roll on um, in crusade for upgrades for certain characters. So nice and interesting. And it's nice that they put that in here. They don't really need to. Most people buy these boxes just for the um, models, but they're trying to tell a story, and the Crusade rules really help that if they're actually if people are actually going to go through them and such. So here's our data sheets. You can see we've got the Blade Champion. He's pretty tasty. Seven wounds, six attacks. All Custodes now have eleven leadership, which is pretty amazing. Um, highest in the game, I think. Um, so you can see he's got different profiles here for chopping stuff up. Uh, we've got our Witch Seekers, which are some of the Sisters, um, Terminators. Neither of those have particularly changed much. Uh, we can see from looking at the Shield Captain and the Vexilla, which is down here, that it seems like most Custode characters are getting an extra attack and wound, just to bring them again into the new edition where they kind of up the power of everything. They really need to make the most elite of uh, models uh, keep up with that. Then we've got the Hybrids. They take an entire sheet on their own, mainly due to their copious amounts of war gear they can take. We've got the saboteur, she's got loads of cool rules. 
And then uh, we must have missed the page with the Gene Stealer, Patriarch, Primus, and Mega. As I said, they've all got cool upgrades. And that is the box. I think I paid 80 quid for it. Um, yeah, pretty good value, I think, for the models you get inside. I'm hoping to recoup some of that by selling on. I've got my new Blade Champion. I've got my sisters. Um, if I was just buying those brand new off the shelf, that cost me 40, 50 quid. So I'm really happy with this box and hopefully going to uh, enjoy building and painting. Custodes are the army I intend to maybe take to a few tournaments next year. They're my, they're my newest army, i.e. they're the most modern model range I own. Um, so I'm really hoping they get really cool rules in the codex uh, so I can really enjoy playing them. Anyway, if you're watching this over the Christmas period, who knows when Kaiser is sticking it up. Uh, have a really Merry Christmas and we'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.